Welcome to the Daily Bible Reader Podcast. I am your host, Rakia Collins, and the mission of this podcast is to read the Bible from beginning to end every single year, starting in 2024. If that mission sounds interesting to you, I'd encourage you to grab your Bible and read along with me. On today's episode, we are going to be reading Genesis chapter 42 through Genesis chapter 44. Genesis chapter 42. Joseph's brothers go to Egypt. When Jacob learned that there was grain for sale in Egypt, he said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is grain for sale in Egypt. Go down and buy grain for us there that we may live and not die. So ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Benjamin, Joseph's brother, with his brothers, for he feared that harm might happen to him. The sons of Israel came to buy among the others who came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over the land. He was the one who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed themselves before him with their faces to the ground. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he treated them like strangers and spoke roughly to them. Where do you come from? He said. They said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. And Joseph remembered the dreams that he had dreamed of them. And he said to them, You are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. But they said to him, No, my Lord, your servants have come to buy food. We are all sons of one man. We are honest men. Your servants have never been spies. He said to them, No, it is the nakedness of the land that you have come to see. And they said, We, your servants, are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, It is as I said to you, You are spies. By this you shall be tested. By the life of Pharaoh you shall not go from this place until your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you and let him bring your brother. Meanwhile, send one of you and let him bring your brother while you remain confined that your words may be tested whether there is truth in you or else by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. And he put them all in custody for three days. On the third day, Joseph said to them, Do this and you will live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers remain confined while you are in custody and let the rest go and carry grain for the famine of your households and bring your youngest brother to me. So your words will be verified and you shall not die. Then they said to one another, In truth, we are guilty concerning our brother and that we saw the distress of his soul when he begged us and we did not listen. That is why this distress has come upon us. And Reuben answered them, Did I not tell you to not sin against the boy? But you did not listen. So now there comes a reckoning for his blood. They did not know that Joseph understood them, for there was an interpreter between them. Then he turned away from them and wept. And he returned to them and spoke to them. And he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. And Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with grain and to replace every man's money in his sack and give them provisions for the journey. This was done for them. Then they loaded their donkeys with their grain and departed. And as one of them opened their sack to give their donkey fodder at the lodging place, He saw his money in the mouth of his sack. He said to his brothers, My money has been put back. Here it is in the mouth of my sack. At this, their hearts failed them, and they turned trembling to one another, saying, What is this that God has done to us? When they came to Jacob, their father in the land of Canaan, 
they told him all that had happened to them, saying, The man, the Lord of the land, spoke roughly to us and told us to be spies of the land. But we said to him, We are honest men. We have never been spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more. The youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the Lord of the land, said to us, By this I shall know you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers with me and take grain for the famine of your households and go your way. Bring your youngest brother to me that I shall know you are not spies but honest men and I will deliver your brother to you and you shall trade in the land. As they emptied their sacks, behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when they and their father saw their bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob, their father, said to them, You have bereaved me of my children. Joseph is no more, and Simeon is no more, and now you would take Benjamin. All this has come against me. Then Reuben said to his father, Kill two of my sons if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my hands and I will bring him back to you. But he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead and he is the only one left. If harm should happen to him on the journey that you are to make, you would bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to Sheol. There is so much to unpack in this chapter. I am so excited for it. So the first thing is honestly rather just some funny commentary to me. So in verse 1 of chapter 42, it says, When Jacob learned that there was grain for sale in Egypt, he said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? I thought that was so funny. Like to me, I imagine that like him saying, Why are you guys just sitting around looking at each other? Why are you twiddling your thumbs? Go and get us some food. Like, this isn't rocket science. Like, why are you just staring at each other? So I thought that was just so funny. Dropping down a little further as we get into verse 20. And this is where we see that Joseph is telling them they have to bring their youngest brother, Benjamin, to Joseph in order for Joseph to actually believe their story that they are honest men, that there are 12 of them, that they belong to the same man, and that they're not spies. Verse 21, Then they said to one another, In truth, we are guilty concerning our brother, and that we saw the distress of his soul when he begged us and we did not listen. And this is why this distress has come upon us. Can we just listen to the terminology that's used, the distress of his soul when he begged them not to do that to him. It's mind-blowing that the Bible and the interpretation that we're reading, the ESV, chose to use those terms to describe the level of anguish that Joseph had to have been experiencing in this moment. And just to read it and to know that Irrespective of the words that this interpretation uses, the point is they were aware of Joseph's feelings in that moment. They were aware of how he didn't want to be in that situation. The look on his face, I'm sure he had to beg them to leave him alone. I'm sure he had to essentially beg for his life because he didn't know if he was going to die or not. Because if we recall, their first plan of action was to actually kill him. It wasn't to sell him into slavery. We can see that the brothers in the act were aware of Joseph's feelings. And so if we drop down a little further, verse 22, and Reuben answered them, did I not tell you not to sin against the boy, but you did not listen? So now there comes a reckoning for his blood. That, I just let that speak for itself. Verse 23, they did not know that Joseph understood them, for there was an interpreter between them. Verse 24, then he turned away from them and wept. 
a couple of things that I want to call out about that I didn't again. I and it's crazy because as you read the Bible, you pick up on these little things. I did not see this. I promise you guys, I did not see this the first time I read it. Why does Joseph have to have an interpreter there if they're technically all from the same place? Joseph grew up with these people. These are his brothers. He should understand the language. And what I love about this is that the Bible chose to tell us that Joseph had to have an interpreter. Joseph has been at this new level for such a long time that he's not even familiar anymore with the language of the old circumstances that he was in. And that speaks volumes outside of just the current context even to our modern lives, how familiar are we with the things of the past? Can you easily recall them? Or have you gotten so engrossed in your present circumstances to where if someone from your past comes up or reappears, do you need an interpreter or can you just fall right back into your old pattern? Just some food for thought. Dropping down to verse 38. And at this point in the story, we have the brothers. They've gone back to Jacob. They have spoken to Jacob and given him the lay of the land around what happened when they went to Egypt and their experience there and essentially told Jacob that in order for us to go back, we're going to have to bring Benjamin. Verse 38, but he said, my son shall not go down with you For his brother is dead and he is the only one left. If harm should happen to him on the journey that you are to make, you would bring my gray hairs with sorrow to Sheol. And I did some quick research. Sheol is essentially like the underworld, like where people who are dead when they go down there to Sheol. And so that's what Jacob is saying in this sentence. We know that he said something similar when he found out that Joseph was was no more, when he was mourning and he was grieving. This chapter is just really packed full of emotion, raw honesty, truth, just family, right? Technically not your typical family, but again, family nonetheless. So let's proceed to chapter 43 as we continue to unpack what happens next in the story. Joseph's brothers returned to Egypt. Now the famine was severe in the land, and when they had eaten the grain that they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, go again, buy us a little food. But Judah said to him, the man solemnly warned us, saying, you shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send me, but if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, you shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. Israel said, Why did you treat me so bad as to tell the man that you had another brother? They replied, The man questioned us carefully about ourselves and our kindred, saying, Is your father still alive? Do you have another brother? What we told him was an answer to these questions. Could we in any way know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Judah said to Israel, his father, Send the boy with me, and we will arise and go that we may live and not die, both we and you and also our little ones. I will be a pledge of his safety. From my hand you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. If we had not delayed, we would have returned twice. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be, then do this. Take some of the choice fruits of the land in your bags and carry a present down to the man, a little balm and a little honey, gum, myrrh, pistachio nuts, and almonds. Take double the money with you. Carry back with you the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take also your brother and arise. Go again to the man. May God Almighty grant you mercy before the man, and may he send back your brother and Benjamin. And as for me, 
If I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. So the men took this present and they took double the money with them and Benjamin. They arose and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with him, he said to the steward of his house, Bring the men into the house and slaughter an animal and make ready, for the men are to dine with me at noon. The man did as Joseph told him and brought the men to Joseph's house. And the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house. And they said, It is because of the money which was replaced in our sacks the first time that we were brought in, so that he may assault us and fall upon us to make us servants and seize our donkeys. So they went up to the steward of Joseph's house and spoke with him at the door of the house and said, Oh, my Lord, we came down the first time to buy food. And when we came to the lodging place, we opened our sacks and there was each man's money in the mouth of his sack. So we have brought it again with us and we have brought other money down with us to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks. He replied, Peace to you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has put treasure in your sacks for you. I received your money. Then he brought Simeon out. And when the man had brought the men into Joseph's house and given them water, and they had washed their feet, and when he had given their donkey's father, they prepared the food. They prepared the present for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard that there should be bread there. When Joseph came home, they brought into the house to him the present that they had with them and bowed down to him to the ground. And he inquired about their welfare and said, Is your father the old man of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? They asked, Your servant our father is well. He is still alive. And they bowed their heads and prostrated themselves. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son. And he said, Is this your youngest brother of whom you spoke to me? God be gracious to you, my son. Then Joseph hurried out, for his compassion grew warm for his brother, and he sought a place to weep. And he entered his chamber and wept there. Then he washed his face and came out, and controlling himself, he said, Serve the food. They served him by himself and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with them by themselves, because the Egyptians could not eat with the Hebrews, for that was an abomination to the Egyptians. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked at one another in amazement. Portions were taken to them from Joseph's table, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as theirs. In chapter 43, I love the way it starts off because you can see that Israel is still angry. He is angry and he's going back and forth with his son Judah because Judah, you can tell he has his, he has a little attitude as well. He's listen, we're not going back down there to see Joseph unless we're able to take Benjamin back with us. To which Israel responds, which is admittedly a great response. Why did you even tell him that you had a brother to begin with? And this is not as heavily documented in the Bible, but we can see in verse seven, they replied, the man questioned us carefully about ourselves and our kindred saying, is your father still alive? Do you have another brother? What we told him was an answer to these questions. Could we in any way know that he would say, bring your brother down? So they're engaging back and forth in this discourse because Israel, as we saw in chapter 42, does not want Benjamin to go down there. But ultimately, Israel relents and says, take him with you. If I am bereaved, I am bereaved. And it is very sad. It is very heartfelt because if you can imagine out of 12 sons, the woman he actually loved, Rachel, she only had two. One, to Israel's current knowledge, is no longer walking the earth. And the other one is younger than Joseph. And it's just sad because you can just sense the fact that Israel does not want him to go. 
he just doesn't. But again, ultimately, he does go. He does allow Benjamin to go. I love the way that it's stated in verse 14, where it says, May God Almighty grant you mercy before the man, and may he send back your other brother and Benjamin, and ask for me, if I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. It's that finality of, if I don't get what I want, meaning I don't get my sons back. I don't get Simeon back. I don't get Benjamin back. If I have to be bereaved, I will be bereaved. Such a strong statement that we have here from Israel. Verse 15. So the men took this present and they took double the money with them and Benjamin. They arose and went down to Egypt before Joseph. I love how when they were listing out the things that they took with them from their home to Egypt, Benjamin was the last one there. I love that they put the presents, they put the money, and then they said Benjamin. I look at that statement, and while again it may or may not be true, this is my own commentary, I look at that as they knew Benjamin was the most prized possession. They took the presents, the pistachio nuts, they took the myrrh. They took the money, right, which was more important than those gifts. But then they took Benjamin, the ultimate gift in Israel's eyes, because he didn't know he was going to get his son back or not. And so as we continue going through, we finally see where Joseph in verse 30, he actually gets to lay eyes on Benjamin. This is after years and years. And so we can see that it's been a long time since Joseph has seen his brother, likely decades. And the reunion, which they don't know is a reunion, but he knows as we see in verse 30, where he says that Joseph hurried out for his compassion grew warm for his brother and he sought a place to weep. In two chapters, this is the second time that we've seen Joseph have to leave the scene because it was just too much internal emotion for him. I couldn't even imagine after decades of dealing with this family dynamic, knowing that they sold you into slavery, knowing that they did you wrong, knowing that they finally acknowledged back in in chapter 42 that they did you wrong, that they heard your crying, they heard your screaming, and they still did what they wanted to do anyway. Yet the one thing that we see throughout this entire thing is that Joseph still did not do them what some may argue he rightly should have done. He should have done wrong to them. But so far from what we've seen, Joseph has done nothing that's been extreme. He wanted to see Benjamin and Remarkably, he was able to get them to bring Benjamin to him without, to this point in the story, revealing who he was. And it's honestly just fascinating that the Bible allows us to see this level of character development and really put ourselves, as much as we possibly can anyway, put ourselves in the shoes of the individuals that we were reading because As mentioned on previous episodes, these are not just people that we're reading about. The Bible is a very intentional, living, breathing book. There are things that we can learn from these stories, from Jacob, from Joseph, the way Joseph is handling himself, the way he's dealing with this situation. And so hopefully, as you read chapter 43, you found something that really took your breath away, that really made you pause and really made you think. And hopefully we can keep that thinking going on as we get into chapter 44. Chapter 44, Joseph tests his brothers. Then he commanded the steward of his house, fill the men's sacks with food as much as they can carry and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack and put up my cup, the silver cup, in the mouth of the sack of the youngest with his brothers for the grain. And he did as Joseph told him. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away with their donkeys. They had gone only a short distance from the city. 
Now Joseph said to his steward, Up, follow after the men, and when you overtake them, say to them, Why have you repaid evil for good? Is it not from this that my Lord drinks, and by this that he practices divination? You have done evil in doing this. When he overtook them, he spoke to them these words. They said to him, Why does my Lord speak such words as these? Far be it from your servants to do such a thing. Behold, the money that we found in the mouths of our sacks we have brought back to you from the land of Canaan. How then could we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? Whichever of your servants is found with it shall die, and we also will be my Lord's servants. He said, Let it be as you say. He who is found with it shall be my servant, and the rest of you shall be innocent. Then each man quickly lowered his sack to the ground, and each man opened his sack. And he searched, beginning with the eldest and ending with the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they tore their clothes, and every man loaded his donkey, and they returned to the city. When Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, he was still there. They fell before him to the ground. Joseph said to them, What deed is this that you have done? Do you not know that a man like me can indeed practice divination? And Judah said, What shall we say to my Lord? What shall we speak? How can we clear ourselves? God has found out the guilt of your servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also in whose hand the cup was found. But he said, Only the man in whose hand the cup was found shall be my servant. As for you, go up in peace to your father. Then Judah went to him and said, Oh, my Lord, please let your servant speak a word in my Lord's ear, and let not your anger burn against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Have you a father or a brother? And we said to my Lord, We have a father an old man and a young brother, the child of his old age. His brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, Bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes on him. We said to my Lord, The boy cannot leave his father, for if he should leave, his father would die. Then you said to your servants, Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall not see my face again. When we went back to your servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. And when our father said, go again, buy us a little food, we said, we cannot go down. If our youngest brother goes with us, then we will go down. For we cannot see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father said to us, you know, that my wife bore me two sons. One left me, and I said, Surely he has been torn to pieces, and I have never seen him since. And if you take this one also from me, and harm happens to him, you will bring my gray hairs in evil to Sheol. Now therefore, as soon as I come to your servant, my father, and the boy is not with us, Then as his life is bound up in the boy's life, as soon as he sees that the boy is not with us, he will die. And your servants will bring down the gray hairs of your servant, our father, with sorrow to Sheol. For your servant became a pledge of safety for the boy to my father, saying, If I do not bring him back to you, then I shall bear the blame before my father all my life. Now therefore, please let your servant remain instead of the boy as the servant to my Lord, and let the boy go back with his brothers. For how can I go back to my father if the boy is not with me? I fear to see the evil that would find my father. So chapter 44, chapter 44, just starting from the beginning of the chapter, we see that it's not over for Joseph. Joseph, if I were to put myself in his shoes, After all this time of not seeing his family, specifically not seeing his brother, and he wants his brother back, 
that's ultimately what it is. Like he wants to spend more time with his brother. He wants to see his brother more often. And so he essentially sets up his younger brother by planting this silver cup that he says that he uses for divination. Now, the truth behind using the cup for divination, I can't confidently speak to. I do not know. But what I do know is that it was a setup. Joseph used that because theft back in those days was high treason. It was something you did not do. You did not steal from people. And to steal from someone in Joseph's position was just unheard of. And so that's why you can see that when Joseph Stewart chases after his brothers, the brothers are quick to say, what are you talking about? If you find Joseph's stuff among us, kill that person and let us be your slaves. Like we can see, they literally said in verse nine, whichever of your servants is found with it shall die and we also shall be my Lord's servants. So you can tell that they were not joking about this. If something of Joseph's were found among them, they were ready to kill whoever it is. He doesn't even deserve to live. But we can see that tone changed when they found it in Benjamin's sack. We know that the tone changed because in verse 13, we see that they tore their clothes and every man, every one of them loaded their donkeys and they returned to the city. And what I love about this is that this is in verse 14, this is Judah. And this is again, like what I love about the Bible a few chapters back made us very aware of Judah's situation with Tamar and how he didn't do her right. He had bad choice of judgment in that particular situation. But as we see here in verse 14, the Bible says when Judah and his brothers. So we know that Judah's about to step up. Judah's about to take the step. And I love essentially the rest of the chapter is him explaining to Joseph in raw, honest detail. This is exactly what happened to our family when we went away from you the last time. And we had to go back and tell our father that if we were ever going to come back and get anything from Egypt, while this famine is going on, we are going to have to bring Benjamin with us. And he essentially recounts that entire story to Joseph, who up until this point doesn't know any of this, at least from our knowledge, he doesn't know this. And so we see Judah talking about how he's telling Jacob in verse 26 we can't go down if our youngest brother does not go with us. For the man said that he has to see our youngest brother. And then we see here, and I think this, at least for me, this is what got me. In verse 28, we see that this is Judah speaking on behalf of Jacob. He says, one left me and I said, surely he has been torn to pieces and I have never seen him since. If you take this one also from me and harm happens to him, you will bring down my gray hairs and evil to Sheol. And to know that you are talking to the son that he thinks is dead, it's powerful, it's riveting. And as we know, Joseph has already shown two times before that he had to go away and weep because he was on such an emotional roller coaster. I can only imagine hearing that story played back to him from Judah, what that did to him in that moment. It's so powerful. And as we see, chapter 44 ends with Judah essentially telling Joseph in verse 34, for how can I go back to my father if the boy is not with me? I fear to see the evil that would find my father. Basically, if I don't go back with Benjamin, my father, that is going to take it out of him. Such emotion, guys. Don't try to be ahead of me. Don't try to read chapter 45 to figure out what's going to happen. I'm just kidding, guys. I know that it's, we are at a pivotal point in the story. And man, it is so good. It is so good. 
we're really getting to see the complexities of the characters. And so if you do go ahead and read chapter 45, listen, I won't be upset. I will see you guys tomorrow for chapter 45 as we continue to just dive deeper into Joseph's story. And we'll see what happens then. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you found some value out of this content. If you did, please leave me a rating or review wherever you are listening. This would mean the absolute world to me. And I'd love to hear from you on social media. Please feel free to reach out on Twitter at His Eternal Word, the number one. And please feel free to visit the website at www.thedailybiblereader.com. And I hope you stay tuned for the next episode.